والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا الأخوة فنسأل الله تعالى أن يغفر لنا ذنوبنا ويكفر عنا سيئاتنا نسأله بعلم نافع ورزق واسع وعليه نتوكل وإليه المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم صل وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Praise be to Allah, we praise Allah, glorify Him, seek His forgiveness, guidance and His mercy. As we praise Him, we ask for His forgiveness and we ask for His mercy. We ask Allah to accept our efforts and our deeds, good deeds, and forgive us our sins. And we yearn before Allah, we earnestly ask Him to give us useful understanding and knowledge which is beneficial uh, and give us wide sustenance on him we are utterly dependent and to him is our return glory be to him we send peace and prayers of Allah upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa uh, let us carry on and I as if to remind us that we are uh, dealing with uh, Imam al Nawawi's Al Arba'een fi Mabani al Islam wa Qawaid al Ahkam. That's his book, the 40, meaning 40 hadith, to do with the foundations of Islam and the rules to do with Islamic legal injunctions. This is what, on the basis of he chose these 42 hadith. That's the title of his book. With, people call it for shorthand, if you remember, Al Arba'in and Nawawi, or Nawawi, the 40 hadith of Nawawi. But his title of his book, if you remember, is the full title Al Arba'in fi Mabani al Islam wa Qawaid al Ahkam. So in that, we're on hadith number two. And as if not to lose. The, um, the the real sight from the wood and the forest we just need to repeat the hadith to remind ourselves what we're dealing with as we've gone into some detail with it uh, uh, the beginning of it you know I've explained it a few times just to remind ourselves the question that was asked by Jibreel uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and he began uh, by uh, asking, and depends on the version, but the version that we're dealing with in Nawawi is he asked about uh, uh, about Islam first. Remember, with Abu Huraira comes the other way around. He asked about Iman first, Islam. It's all the same. So he says, Ya Muhammad, ahbidni an al-Islam. Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Faqal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Al Islam and Tashada La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa Tukima Sala wa to uh wa to zaka wa tasuma Ramadan wa ta hujjal bait in ista ta'ata ilayhi sabila. The Messenger of Allah he said uh, Islam is that you declare there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, that you establish the Salah, that you pay the zakah that you fast in Ramadan and that you perform the Hajj to the house if you are able to do so in his way. Allah Sadaqt, he said, you have spoken rightly. And we found it strange that he asked him and then he was saying to him that you've spoken rightly. All, then he said, Jibreel Ya'ni, Iman. So tell me about Iman. Fal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and took me nabi lahi wa malaikati hi wa kutubi hi wa rusul, wal yawm il akhri wa took me nabi qadri khayri hi wa sharri. So he said, Iman is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, and to believe in qadr, in fate, the good of it and the bad of it. And qadr, we talked about the last couple of sessions. 
uh, about this idea of Qadr al-Islam and people who had various opinions also. All, all asadaqt, he said again, you have spoken rightly. All, fa'akhbirni an al-ihsan. So tell me about ihsan. All, an ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ It is to worship and serve Allah, to do his ibadah as though you see him. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Even though you see him not, for surely he sees you. For surely he sees you. So this is the stage we've got to. And in our explanation uh, of the hadith so far, we've covered whole array of topics from the various narrations of the hadith from various sahaba who narrated it from the same sahaba and different compilers Bukhari, Muslim, Nasa'i who narrated the ahadith yeah. uh, the likes of uh, Abu Huraira, Ibn Abbas and in this case the one in Nawawi which is Ibn Umar of course reporting from the hadith of Umar radiallahu from his father and we looked at where, uh, ver some of the various wordings of it some extra included and some lesser included uh, and the setting of, of this taking place then we looked at the whole issue of Iman and Islam and their various meanings and the difference amongst the fuqaha and ulama about the meaning of Iman in fact uh, what it meant um, uh, from the Salaf time to this day and we elaborated on that uh, together with that we looked at the whole issue of Al-Qadr or Qadr Fate, uh, which was the issue when Ibn Umar is actually reporting the hadith, if you remember, because some people at the Tabi'in time yeah, had made it an uh, incorrect understanding and an issue which caused, caused problems, taking away from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So uh, we looked at the issue of Qadr as well. And then we also moved on to the uh, other issues to do with Iman. And last time we looked at, in fact, Iman linked with uh, Kufr, yeah, the difference between Iman and Kufr. When the word Kufr is used, that it doesn't always mean in a hadith and in the Quran, we gave evidence that it doesn't necessarily mean that one becomes a kafir, a disbeliever. Yeah. Kufr can be, as one of the young brothers said, as all, some of the ulama said, that be Kufr Akbar, the greater Kufr, which makes you a Kafir, and Kufr Aswar, which doesn't take you out of the deen, but the term is used to show the seriousness of what you are not doing or what you are doing. Yeah. Not doing Tariq was Salah was the classic case we took of the one who doesn't pray out of laziness five times a day, yeah. whether they pray zero times a day, or once a day, or three times a day, or four times a day, or two, they're all under the same category. They would be called Tariqus Salah. Yeah. One who doesn't pray five times a day, only prays four times a day, is Tariqus Salah. Those, that person who left the Salah. And that's the issue that we dealt with last time. And uh, the Hadith of Prophet uh, <coughs> saying, Faqad Kafir, that the person has done Kufr. Yeah. And, and hence the ulama came to various conclusions as to how to deal with those. And if you remember, we <coughs> summarized most of that last time. And we looked at also where the Prophet used the word kufr for other issues as well. And the ulama are now showed their discrepancy. The same word kufr is used, but they did come with the conclusion of imprisoning such people or killing them, but they did for salah, yeah, which didn't make, they're not being fair. Yeah. We can see where they're coming from. So we give the other to the ulama and the scholars from their time. You couldn't imagine a believer not praying five times a day. Yeah? You're talking about, you know, within the first two or three hundred years, the Sahaba and Tabi'in, many of them had this idea. That, because from Sahaba time, the only people they saw that were reluctant even to pray, they prayed, but reluctant to pray, lazy to pray, were monafics. They were not real believers. So they couldn't imagine a real believer leaving Salah. Leaving so, <coughs> so this is what it was built on. In theory, the idea of imprisoning and killing somebody leaving the salah, saying they're kafir. In practice, it was never practiced, which shows it was a theoretical idea from the scholars, okay. written in theory of law. 
but in practice <coughs> we don't find it because it's impossible to put into practice you'd be killing so many people or imprisoning so many people as we said last time so we have that uh, issue and and kufr is to, to use the word kufr la yu'min has the same meaning la yu'min yeah that person doesn't believe what does that mean <laughs> it's saying the opposite the other side of the same coin yeah same coin la yu'min means yakfur <laughs> yeah huwa yakfur he doesn't believe means he's a disbeliever and the Prophet used it in so many uh, occasions, saying, La yu'min. La yu'min is a big thing to say that he doesn't have Iman or she doesn't have Iman. What does that mean? Not having Iman means having Kufr. <laughs> you can only have one or the other. So there are many hadith to do with that, actually, which I was deliberating on, but I didn't see other scholars mention these, but I deliberated. I thought, actually, it's the same thing. So we gave some examples last time of the Prophet using that for to do with behavior yeah to do with behavior uh, about loving one another la yu'min ahadukum hatta yuhibbu li akhi ma yuhibbu li nafsi none of you truly has iman until you love for your brother or say what you love for yourself for other people yeah for example so not otherwise it be kufr yeah uh um, the prophet sallallahu said Wallahi la yu'min, as I said, gave you last time in summary. Wallahi la yu'min, wallahi la yu'min, three times. By Allah, and I swearing, taking oath, Allah, by Allah, that this person does not have iman. Subhanallah, what does that mean? It's like saying, Faqad kafar, he's, he's done kafar. Yeah? Same thing, and what did he say? Man la ya'manu jaruhu From the one who the neighbor is not safe from his harm, his or her harm. All kinds of harm. Look at the strong statement here. Right? But do we now say somebody who is bad to their neighbor, they've done kufr, so we imprison them? Sometimes you may need to. But do we kill them because it's kufr? No, you can't say that. It's the same kind of idea as is used in Salah. Yeah. As used in Salah. Of course, Salah is a very serious thing. Don't get the idea I'm saying being easy on people who are not praying five times a day. We leave that judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm saying, nothing came in Quran and Sunnah as a punishment, a had or a ta'zee really to punish people who don't pray five times a day out of laziness. Out of laziness. That's my point here. Although it's a serious sin. Yeah, there are many serious sins. No punishment, worldly punishment comes, but there will be punishment in the hereafter. Yeah? And but we leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not for us to decide. This is interesting uh, that in one version, in uh, Bukhari Muslim, Prophet Sallallahu about the neighbor, he's saying, Wallahi la yu'min, by Allah, that person doesn't believe. Okay. In another version, in Muslim, La yadhulu jannata, man la ya'munu jaruhu bawaiqa. That person will not enter paradise from whose the neighbor is not uh, safe from his or her harm. Ah, so now people think, won't enter paradise, must be kafir. Yeah. Remember, some of the, uh, the, 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 the sects who deviated from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that was the argument. Yeah. They used those ahadith about, like, oh yes, don't kabair, become kafir. Yeah, because they're going into hellfire, look. Ah. Do Fasik go into hellfire? Fisk is not kufr. Fisk means those who sin, who are believers and they sin. Believers who do sinning, can they end up in hellfire? Of course they can. Quran and Hadith are full of. This is about believers who are sinning. Yeah? La, wallahi la yu'min, but Allah, that person doesn't believe, being harmful. But Prophet, nobody made that person into actually a kafir. But by Islamic standards, they are fasik. It's a believer who's doing sin, terrible sin. So there are believers who believe in Layla Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And will they go will they be punished in half? Of course they will be. Of course they will be. But we believe that eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them out. Or maybe before that, they may get the shafa of Rasulullah, his intercession. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself who takes 
uh, as Hadith in Bukhari mentions, handfuls from hellfire, out of hell, but they've gone into hellfire already, of someone who has an atom degree of Iman inside them, or a mustard degree of Iman inside them, Allah SWT takes them out. But they're already in hellfire, you see. Yeah, they're believers we're talking about. Yeah. So there's no contradiction here when Hadith mentions instead of by Allah that person doesn't believe, it says that person won't enter paradise. Yeah. Again, it is the severity of the warning. Yeah. That's not to say they will not enter paradise forever. Prophet didn't say that. Didn't say that. That's at the outset to let us know. So that's just uh, to summarize uh, and finish off from what I'd mentioned before. Now we come to an interesting and beautiful topic because the next question, Jibril moves to something to do with depth and quality. Now all of these are, uh, uh, interestingly, as we looked at Iman and Islam, we said that Iman and Islam are used interchangeably, aren't they? Yeah. When they're on their own, Ibn Rajab says that beautifully, uh, when they're used on their own, one covers the other. If it's Iman, it means Islam as well. Islam means Iman as well. When they come together, they differentiate it nicely. Uh, Sayyid Maududi, rahimahullah, for example, he writes in his book, Islamic uh, Values, Dynamic Value, Power and Change. Islam, uh, the introduction to that is very long and done by Furan Murad. I read it and studied it a few times, many years ago. I was thinking about it the other day. He, uh, in fact, shows Iman, uh, uh, as a level of morality to do with like Iman's like a seed that's inside but yet he gives examples of this seed giving its fruits and he gives lots of examples as we did to show that Iman is not limited to just in the heart and the tongue he actually even though he comes from a Hanifi background doesn't take absolutely that standing of Hanafi standing which separated Iman quality wise to Taqwa he actually, when he's giving the evidence, he's talking about Iman and how it affects the behavior of a person, which fits with the majority Jumhur of ulama, as we said before, of the idea. But nevertheless, his idea when he puts Islam there, he says that Iman is like a seed which will show its fruits. It's bound to show its fruits unless Iman is corrupt. If the seed is itself uh, faulty, diseased, Iman is diseased, or if the ground is not fertile to look after the Iman, then good plant won't come out. Inevitably a good plant will come out, which is part of Iman, and he calls that Islam as well, the shoots and the fruits that it gives, Islam. Yeah. And then he moves to uh, Taqwa, and really, you know, uh, he, he takes it at a different level. But really Taqwa is a part of Iman, isn't it? Taqwa is a quality of Iman. Taqwa is a quality of Iman. The Prophet is saying, At-Taqwa ha-huna wa yushiru ila sadrihi bitalatha marra. And he pointed to his breast and his heart three times. He said, Taqwa is here. Iman is here. <laughs> yeah. But Taqwa is a special quality. Yeah. As some ulama explain, and actually Sahaba, if you find in authentic sayings, the uh, conversation between uh, Umar bin Khattab and, and Ubay bin Ka'b when they're discussing and one asking the other about what is taqwa yeah and and uh, Ubay bin Ka'b says to uh, Umar bin Khattab he says how would you walk along a pathway that is surrounded and got thorns along it and surrounded by thorns so Umar bin Khattab said well I would take up my robes and walk, tread carefully, so I don't get pulled or pricked by the thorns. He said, that is taqwa. So I find that a beautiful description, actually, of taqwa. So taqwa is more to do with, uh, more to do with awe and fear of Allah SWT, with Iman, because it's belief in Allah, isn't it? So taqwa is linked with Iman, but it focuses on a particular aspect of the quality of belief in Allah and the hereafter, and the hereafter. What aspect? Awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's going to take you to task on the day of judgment. So, yawm al-akhir and belief in Allah come 
in taqwa, in quality sense, of an awe and fear that Allah is watching to stop you from doing bad. That is taqwa. Taqwa stops you and holds you back. Taqwa is holding back for the fear that you're going to answer for it on the Day of Judgment. So answering on the Day of Judgment, fearing Allah SWT are all to do with Iman, isn't it? Yeah? And took me Billah wa malaikati wa rusulihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir. It's all linked. So taqwa is that particular aspect. It is to do with Iman, but it is a real awe and a, a feeling inside taqwa hahuna of quality. Now, it is not just, you know, I believe in Allah and the angel. It's quality. It's a feeling, a deep feeling of Iman and a feeling of closeness to Allah SWT and fear of Allah SWT. Taqwa concentrates more on the fear and awe and majesty of Allah SWT that is going to take you to task to stop you because you don't want to go to his punishment and hellfire. So taqwa is more on that side. Yeah. But Ihsan, and Sayyid Mawduri talks about Ihsan uh, as the fourth category. And uh, in his book, he puts Ihsan as like somebody doing something out of seeking the face of Allah SWT, his mercy, out of love. So, Ihsan seems to be more to do with, according to Sayyid Mawdudi, going out of your day, way, going out of the way, doing good works. Not just holding back from doing bad things, which is taqwa. Now, positively trying to make good. Positively trying to do good. One is a passive holding back. Yeah? The other is a proactive doing of good. Which is actually a very good idea for what Ihsan really is. And for what purpose it is. Here, in this hadith, from Jibril and the Prophet is given a new element to Ihsan. Ihsan itself has a language meaning in Arabic. The Arabs already knew what Ihsan meant. They already knew what Ihsan But here is a special things being given to it. You see. So what does Ihsan mean? Hasuna. is to be good, to be better, to be nice, yeah, all those things. The thing itself is hasan or hasuna is the verb, yeah, that is to be good, to be nice, yeah, so hasuna is the fail, fail mali. Then we have in its fourth form, Ahsana Yuhsinu in its Mudari form. Right? Fourth form. Second form, Hassana, you Hassinu, has a meaning also that you make something good. Yeah? You make something good. You make something right. Ahsana, Yuhsinu, also has similar meaning. You make something better. You make something good. Yeah? You. Uh, but it also inherently in that has the meaning of you when you're doing good you do it you make something uh, 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 what do you say excellent yeah you do you do something with excellence that is inherent in the meaning of not just doing good but make it excellent yeah? so that is inherent in the meaning of Excellence or proficiency. <coughs> and from it comes the master. Ihsan. Ihsan. 
So Ihsan is the Masdar which is excellence. Yeah. And the person doing is from their muhsin. And muhsin will be the one that good is done to. Okay? So muhsin and ihsan we're talking about is doing good but really doing doing with excellence. Yeah. That is inbuilt in the meaning as the the language experts of the, the scholars of the past and present have said that is understood by the Arabs when they use the word Ahsana, Yuhsinu and Ihsan. Okay? To do Ihsan. But here, now, uh, Jibreel asks, Akhbirni an al Ihsan. Tell me about Ihsan. He's put the you put the chairs, is it alright with the camera there at the moment? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Put them later. Put them at the back over there at the moment. Ahsana Yuhsin. So Ihsan, he says, Akhbirni an il Ihsan. Tell me about Ihsan. So the Prophet is adding something more to what the Arabs already knew in their language what Ihsan was. Yeah? Because around him is Shirk. So the Arabs know what Ihsan is, but he's adding something very special. Yeah. And that is linked with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why he says, Al-Ihsan. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu. Ka'annaka tarahu. Fa'il lam takun tarahu fa'innahu yaraak. It is that you serve and worship Allah as though you see him. And though you see him not, truly he sees you. So now, Ihsan has got a special shari meaning. Shari meaning. So your excellence and proficiency in doing anything to do, here is uh, the Prophet used use the word ta'bud. Some people, from scholars who did the sharh of this hadith, reduced it to, also when you do ibadah, your salah, you do your salah as though you are seeing Allah. And though, though you don't see him, Truly, he sees you. Right? That can be. That's part of the meaning. But, but, to limit it to that meaning is incorrect. Incorrect. Yeah. Because excellence and proficiency, whether it's doing salah or any ibadah, fasting or hajj or umrah or giving, some, however, for a believer. Allah is not only watching you when you're doing salah, is he? Because that's what the idea you would walk away with. Yeah, when I do my salah, uh, uh, I have to do it as though Allah is watching me. So when I walk away from the prayer mat, as many of us behave, it's as though Allah stopped watching you. Now you're going to do whatever you want to do. No. It's not true. So to limit the meaning, even though the word ibadah is being used by the Prophet, and ta'bud Allah ka'inna but we know in Arabic, Quran and Sunnah, that Abd, Ma'bud and Ibadah has wide meaning. Yeah? Huh? Wide meaning. All of our behavior, actions and doing good and stopping ourselves evil, all of that counts as Ibadah. We are Ibad. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And Allah SWT is saying, and I have not created jinn and human beings except for Worshipping and serving me, Allah SWT is saying. But that doesn't mean that we stand in prayer all day and all night, do we? If Allah is saying, I haven't created me except for this, it would mean if it meant salah only, ibadah, yeah, salah or fasting, that we'd have to fast and be in prayer all day and all night long. Because Allah is saying, I only created you for that purpose. That's obviously not the meaning. So ibadah in Islam has a wide meaning. Servitude means to follow the rules and regulations Allah SWT has sent you. So all of life. Yeah? So in other words, what's added now is to do everything in, from ritual worship to whatever we do of responsibility in our lives, which we're going to answer to Allah for, to do it with excellence, proficiency, before that's all it meant. But now with the hadith, it means to do it with excellent proficiency because Allah is watching you. 
and you're going to answer to him. Okay? So look what, that, this is what this hadith added to Ihsan. Meaning of Ihsan became Al-Ihsan. Yeah? We specially linked it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. Quran is already replete with the idea of Ihsan. Yeah, and doing good works and doing excellence. Allah SWT says, for example, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ إِنَّا لَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا Surely, those who believe and do good works, surely we will not let go to waste the rewards of those مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا who Amilu Salihat's already mentioned good works. Now Ahsana Amala, Ahsana is that form. Those who do excellence in their deeds, we won't let their good works go to waste. So now this Ahsan is not just good work, it's doing with excellence good works. Allah SWT said, used it in the Quran like that. In Surah 18, verse 30, Allah SWT says, uh, in Surah Al Baqarah, بَلَا مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Nay, but the one who submits their face, yeah, وَجْهَهُ Who submits their face, meaning before Allah, and وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ He is the one who is doing Ihsan. Yeah, excellence in good works. This person is a muhsin. For that person, fellow, is a reward with their Lord. And there'll be no fear and grief on such people. Yeah? Or Allah SWT, Surely Allah is with those who have taqwa. And now he separates taqwa from, yeah? So taqwa is one aspect which I mentioned to you earlier. Yeah? It's different from Ihsan. And those who are muhsinu, they are, uh, uh, in, in, they are in, in excellence in doing good works. Yeah? Going out of their way to good, do good works, but not just good, but in the best way. That's what the, the, the muhsinun are. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةِ In Surah An-Nahl. For those who do Ahsanu, it's from that, plural of that. Those who do good deeds in excellence, in plural, for them, Al-Husna is excellence in return, yeah, as reward. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا husna. So their reward is also similar. Husna, which is Jannah. Yeah. Al-Husna. But because of the excellence, Allah SWT adds something else. وَزِيَادَةً وَزِيَادَةً وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in hadith in Sahih Muslim, This ziyada is what? رُؤْيَةُ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ this extra that Allah mentions is seeing the face of Allah on the day of judgment. So there's the reward of Jannah, but seeing the face of Allah is because of their ihsan. And look how that's linked with this hadith. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara, fa in lam takun tarahu fa innahu yarak. That you worship and serve Allah, you live your life as though you see Allah. Though you see Him not. So the reward for the muhsin doing ihsan, actually they get to see Allah on Yawm al Qayyamah. Like you see the clear full moon, the Prophet in another hadith. Yeah? Nothing stopping you, nothing harming you from seeing it. That's how you'll see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hadith says you do it as though you see Allah. No, you don't see him. You will do on the hair in the day of judgment from this other hadith. So Ihsan, as Ziyada, as mentioned in uh, Hadith of Sahih Muslim Prophet this is seeing the face of Allah uh, in paradise. And whereas the opposite, opposite for those who, uh, who are not Muslim, 
كلا بل ران على قلوبهم ما كانوا يكسبون Nay, but they have this rotten on their heart which is a rust and a dust and a dirt which is covering their heart بل ران على قلوبهم because of what they used to do they had this rotten keep on doing bad and evil and you become bad and evil your heart becomes crusted you never then see the light because it's getting this covering on it blackness on it spot by spot by stop spot until it becomes hardened and iman doesn't enter it yeah? and about them what does allah SWT says in contrast to the muhsinin who the prophet said will see the face of allah allah SWT says about those كَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ أَرْ رَبِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَمَحْجُوبُونَ Nay, they are the ones who will be mahjub hijab. Here hijab is used actually. Yeah, they will be screened off from their Lord on the Day of Judgment. Screen, screened from seeing His face. Yeah, that means ignominy. It means... Uh, 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 dilla, humiliation, it means hellfire. Yeah. So that's in contrast to the Muhsinin who will see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll stop, pause here, we'll carry on after Salatul Asr. Uh, inshallah. <laughs> we'll carry on with the Ihsan. It sounds such a beautiful principle actually and a value in Islam. It's one of the very foundational things which elevates a person uh, a, a, to a different level. And because it's actually linked with this thing about link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can imagine what that does. Remove that link and it just becomes ordinary. But when you put the link there which the Prophet and put this in, in this hadith, yeah. <coughs> Uh, that mix uh, takes uh, a, a believer can take him to a different level. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, for example, uh, as a principle, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, "Inna Allah ya'bru bil adl wal ihsan, wa yitaithu qurba, wa yanha al fahshay wal munkar wal bagi, yaihukum la alakum tadikaroo." That famous verse, which we often mention in Juma Khutbah at the end, surely Allah has ordered inna allaha ya'muru bil adl has ordered justice justice equality yeah. justice equality but what comes after that well ihsan the ihsan there's justice but ihsan goes beyond justice there's justice evenness yeah. even hand there's Justice and equality. But Hassan added after Adl, Adl, it takes you to a different level. It takes you beyond justice. Justice is amazing, isn't it? Everybody wants justice. But Hassan is over and above justice. Not under it, not equal to it, but above it. So when Allah SWT, for example, uh, He says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Now Allah SWT in Surah 42 verse 40 Allah SWT says And the recompense or reward for a bad or evil deed is evil recompense in equal to that. Yeah. Bad for a bad. Yeah. E equivalent. A bad equal to it. That's justice, isn't it? Yeah. That's justice. Well, what did Allah SWT say after? فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَحَ However, the one who overlooks, that's beyond justice. The one who overlooks means forgive. وَأَصْلَحَ And makes amends instead, despite wrong being done to them, فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then that person rewarded with Allah. الْإِحْسَانِ أَنْ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُمْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَى Linking with Allah, isn't it? 
as though you see Allah, though you see him not, he sees you. فَأَجْرُهُ أَلَى Allah. So the reward, in other words, the person doing this afa and also sulh uh, or aslaha, islah, making amends instead, when somebody's wronged them and done wrong, they're doing amends instead and overlooking the wrong that's done to them. Whereas justice would, justice would allow them to give, give in return the same. Somebody said, I don't want to speak to you. You say, well, I don't want to speak to you. End of story. Is that just? It is, isn't it? But then somebody says, beyond that, no, I still want to, I'm still going to try and speak to you. And I forgive you for trying to be nasty with me. That's afa wa aslaha. Fajruhu ala Allah. That's ihsan, brothers. That's ihsan. That is ihsan. Fajruhu ala Allah. Innahu la yuhibbu zalimin. Surely Allah, he, surely he doesn't love those who are wrongdoers. Wrongdoers, meaning the one who's doing wrong, don't think they're getting away with it because you're being good in return. That's why that part's there. Innahu, fa innahu la yuhibbu zalimin. So don't all ever think that the wrongdoer, because you've done afa, overlooked, and you've made amends and tried to be good, don't think the wrongdoer is getting away with it. That's why the verse ends with innahu la yuhibbu zalimin. He doesn't, surely he doesn't love those who are doing wrong, nevertheless. They're still going to answer to Allah. And your reward has been increased and multiplied, subhanAllah. Inna Allah ya'amru bil adl wal ihsan. This is ihsan. SubhanAllah. Oh, Allah SWT is saying in Surah 42 again, Surah Hamim Sajda, Allah SWT, he says, doesn't he say, he says, um, um, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ Surely, Allah SWT is saying, the good is not equal to bad. Good things and good deeds are not equal to bad deeds. They're not, they, they're not the same. وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ إِذْفَعَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ هِيَ أَحْسَنُ so return a bad turn with a good turn. Return a bad deed with a good deed. And Allah SWT is using the word, yeah, idfa billati hiya ahsanu. Ahsanu. Yeah. Ahsanu here is a seerah, a, 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 a format which is tafdili, they say, which is best and better than what they're doing. Return it. Return a bad turn with a good turn, as they say in the English language. That is ihsan. That is beyond justice. So that if you return a bad with a good turn, then perhaps the one between whom you and him or her was enmity, a dawatun, will become ka'annahu waliyun hameen, will become a bosom friend. How often has that happened with people who have the sabr and the ihsan to return, yeah, bad behavior with actually good behavior, ihsan, and the person who's doing the bad actually becomes shocked. Isn't it? You can melt the heart of a, an evil person. Not always happen, but it can. And they actually become very best friends. Because I've learned a lesson from you actually and realized that actually this person's not bad, it's news bad. Yeah. Who Allah, whoever Allah guides. So Allah SWT again here, yeah, this is Ihsan. This is Ihsan. Ihsan. Uh, yeah, brothers, even on the battlefield is Ihsan. Even in battle, even in warfare, Ihsan. Allah SWT, in regards to warfare, He mentions in the ayah at the end of Surah uh, An Nahl. Surah Al-Nahl, Allah SWT says, what does it say? In aq wa in aqabtum fa'aqibu bi mithli ma uqibtum bi wa la in sabartum lahuwa khayrul lissabirin And if you punish, yeah, in return, then punish and uh, punish them 
with similar level of how they harmed you. At the same level from what they harmed you with. Yeah? So if it's one strap, then the same strap in return in warfare should be of the same level, not more. Because that's adal, isn't it? That's justice. Look, but Allah doesn't end the verse there. He says, وَلَا إِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ However, if you are patient and endure patiently for what they've harmed you with, in other words, don't re respond back with harm, even in warfare situation. They've harmed you, yeah? So if you have another opportunity for a battle to destroy them, maybe you make amends and try and make peace instead. Prophet never liked warfare. He would try everything to try and avoid it. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That's why he's rahmatul alameen. We Muslims need to understand that before non-Muslims understand it. Yeah. Um, but uh, 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 then that will be good for those who have endurance and that will be good for those who have endurance and patience to withstand the harm of the others. Allah SWT then says, um, وَاسْبِرُوا وَمَا صَبْرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So be patient and steadfast, endure, endure, control, sabr, ihsan. Sabr is part of ihsan, <laughs> having sabr. وَمَا صَبْرُكَ And your patient endurance is only with Allah. It's back to the ihsan again, linking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll only be able to do it, that level of patience, with Allah's link with Allah. إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ And don't grieve over them. وَلَا تَكُ فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ Don't grieve over them. And don't be worried. Yeah? Don't worry yourself of what they are plotting. So don't think, I'm not going to be patient. Look, they're plotting against it all the time. So Allah is saying, don't you worry over what they're plotting. You have the sabr. You have the higher position of endurance and patience. This is in warfare, brothers. <laughs> and then Allah SWT says, Inna Allah ma'al ladheena attaqaw wal-ladheena hum This is the end of the surah and the end after all this, what does Allah say? Surely Allah is with those who have taqwa. Taqwa. Yeah? And those who are muhsinun. These are the ones who are muhsinun. The ones who have been sabr and control despite harm being done to them. Allah Sallallahu uses the word muhsinun at the end. Sorry, but just that muhsinun is spelled. Muhsinun. You just refer to it. In English? Yeah, if you don't mind. M-O-H. Yeah? M-U-H, you can put sounds. Muhsinun. From Ihsan. From Ihsan. Muhsin. And Muhsinun is a plural of Muhsin. Those who are Muhsin. So Allah SWT you know, beautiful verses to do with Ihsan. Uh, and the very overarching principle in Islam, even beyond justice, is Ihsan. Ihsan is a different level. And it's there in that ayah as a principle. And we repeat it and we mention it. Yeah, as it becomes habit, it's not part of Sunnah that you have to mention it in Jummah Khutbah, but the end of it, many Khadibs mention it, and the people are listening, majority don't give any attention to what's being said. Certainly the non-Arab speaking ones don't even know what's being said unless you translate it. And unfortunately even Arab speaking one it probably goes, well, most of us, in one ear out the other even if we're listening to it. What actually it's saying? Yeah. That's a reminder for the gathering to what they should be behaving like. Just, but actually beyond justice. Be Mohsineen. Yeah. Be Mohsineen. Um, So in this um, 
When the Prophet ﷺ says these words, that and, and ta'ab with Allah, I've dealt with ibadah, behavior, is in the whole of your life. كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ As though you see him. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ And even though you don't see him. This is a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam still. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ For surely he sees you. Ulama various had various interpretations. Ibn Rajab, who did the, uh, the tashrih of the Arba'in of Nawawi, as we said before many times in his uh, Jami al Ulum wal Hikm, fi Sharhi Khamsin Hadithan min Jawam al Kalim. That's his title of his book. He made 50 hadith. He took the 40 uh, out of. Uh, uh, um, uh, Anawi and I did more I made 50 remember uh, Ibn Rajab he, he and Ibn Hajar take the same position they're saying that there's two levels of Muhsin what's the two levels they say one is who takes the first part so they give two aspects to this Ihsan from the Prophet Sallallahu statement so Ibn Hajar and uh, Ibn Rajab Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani they were not far from each other in time. Um, so they say one is a higher level, which is that the Mohsin imagines in their heart that they're actually seeing Allah. Yeah? They say this is called Al Mushahada. From Shahada, witness. Yeah. Al Mushahada. This is a higher level. So they say, nevertheless, of course, we're not saying that the believer, the Muslim here, can actually see Allah, either certainly not with the eyes, and not even in the heart they can't see Allah. But they imagine that he's present and they feel it inside them. They said this is a higher level. And then they do their deeds and life as though... Allah is watching, uh, uh, no, no, not as though, as though they are seeing Allah here. Although they don't say see, because they, they qualify that and say, of course they can't say you can see him, because the Prophet is saying, <laughs> though you see him not, so how can they say you can see him? All right. So they, what they get around it, and they say, they divide the, the, the comment into two aspects. The first part, because the Prophet said, as though you see him. So they say, well, that's a higher level. That's the first stage. And for the one who's unable to do that, it's a slightly lower, lower level of Ihsan, then that is the person who imagines in their heart inside that Allah is watching them. So they call that al muraqaba instead of al mushahada Muraqaba from Raqib, from Raqiba, the one who is watching. Yeah, al muraqaba that one is being watched. That is their position on that. In fact, they go to clarify and they criticize, in fact, some of the Sufi sects, so I don't say Sufis full stop, some of the Sufi sects, which they, in fact, Ibn Rajab <laughs> and others like the many of the scholars were from very spiritual and from a, a, a Tasawwuf background. Ibn Rajab's uh, uh, teacher is Ibn Qayyim and his teacher Ibn Taymiyyah. They were into Tasawwuf, they're known as Sufis. So they criticize the Sufis who claim, they say, that they can see Allah with their heart. They say they are liars. And that they can see Allah with their heart all the time. They are liars. They're saying the ones who say that have put themselves in a higher position than the Prophet Sallallahu Because for the Prophet Sallallahu when he went up to the Mi'raj, yeah, and the ayah was revealed to him going to the Mi'raj, one of the interpreta interpretations of some of the Sahaba, and the difference of opinion, uh, like Ibn Abbas, for example, was that the Prophet saw Allah. Majority said he saw he saw Jibreel being suspended in the Mi'raj from Surah An Najm. But Ibn, uh, Ibn Abbas's opinion was that he saw Allah with with his heart, not with the eyes, because that's not possible in this world. So that's for the Prophet so I'm only in the Mi'raj. So now he's saying, they say, some Sufis claim they can see Allah with their heart all the time, so they're putting themselves in a higher position than the Prophet Sallallahu He only did that when he went up in Mi'raj. <laughs> so this is, this is false and they are liars. Okay? So despite them saying that, they're making it very clear that it is not even citing or imagining that you are seeing Allah. 
It's a feeling of his presence more. That's how they describe it. And now we and others went down the other road. And I prefer that road because I believe in this interpretation, this contradiction really. They said the statement is the same. The second statement qualifies the first statement, for that part of the statement. So when the Prophet ﷺ says, and ta'budullah ka'annaka tara, that you worship and serve Allah as though, you, you, as though you see him. But though you see him not, truly he sees you. So the statement really is, truly he sees you. Because the middle part tells you you can't see him. Middle part is telling you, and the last part is qualifying what the Prophet ﷺ really means. That's Nawawi's position and a position of others, and I believe that's the best interpretation of this comment. That you feel as though Allah is watching, observing you. It fits more, doesn't it? Because however you try and say it, you know, if you're going to accept the first part of the statement, that as though you see Allah, then now you're playing games with that and saying, no, it's not to see Him, it is a feeling in the heart. Well, you, you've gone away from the language meaning. He's saying, and ta'budullah ka'annaka tarahu That as though you see him But now you're saying no 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 it doesn't mean that It means you feel in the heart Well then Prophet is telling you himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tarahu Even though you can't see him He's saying for a fact you can't see him That he know ya And surely he sees you So I believe that's the best understanding of that uh, Statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Clarified by himself really and now we has that uh, uh, opinion for that, that it's really the second part qualifies the first part. And this, this presence and feeling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it fits with the, the, the Quran anyway. Yeah? It brings us back to that ihsan linking with the, the, the qurb with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many ayat and hadith bring this qurb out, this feeling of closeness to Allah. This feeling of closeness is to do with, you know, Allah's watching me. When Allah SWT says, uh, He is with you wherever you are, for surely. And Allah, Allah is seeing completely, absolutely seeing everything that you do. Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir. Basir, He's seeing everything you do. Yeah. Yeah. Muraqaba. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same idea. Same idea. This is Ihsan. That having that feeling. Yeah. The quality of Ihsan comes from this closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which this hadith is bringing out as well. And the Quran already brings it out. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ Indeed, we are the ones who created the human beings and we know what whispers his soul gives inside. تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبَلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to him or her than the jugular vessels here. We are closer. So that's the idea that Allah yeah, know that surely he sees you. In the hadith, that's the idea. Uh, Allah SWT says in the Quran, مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ There isn't any, uh, 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 any, uh, anything done privately in secret of three people إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ That he is the fourth. Except that he is the fourth, Allah. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ Except he is the fourth. Uh, or, وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ In the Quran, the Allah is saying. Or, five people sitting privately in secret, except he is the sixth. Glory be to him. Yeah? وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ Or, less than that number. وَلَا أَكْثَرٍ Or, more than that number. إِلَّا هُوَ Ma'ahum aynama kanu Except that he is with them wherever they are And they may be That's a detailed uh, More detailed explanation of Wahuwa ma'akum aynama kuntum He is with you Yeah He is with you all wherever you are As Allah SWT says in Surah Mujadala Verse 7 that was Then Prophet SAW Hadith in Bukhari uh, And Muslim and we'll finish uh, 
uh, with that today. In one hadith in uh, Bukhari, the Prophet uh, hadith mentions that the Prophet finds in the direction of the Qibla, so it's in the masjid, obviously, from the context it tells you it's in the masjid, although the hadith doesn't say it. He finds in the direction of the Qibla some sputum. Yeah. And he displeased. Displeased with the sputum in the direction of the Qibla. It seems somebody's been praying and they spat in front of them in the direction of the Qibla. So the Prophet says, I'm displeased with that. And what does he do? He uses his blessed hand. You show me which arrogant leader would ever do that. He removes the sputum. It's somebody else's sputum. It's not his. With his blessed hand, he removes it from the direction of the Qibla. Wipes it away. This is in Bukhari, brothers. This, hadith. this is the humility of Rasulullah sallallahu eh? alaihi His truthfulness. Show me a false prophet who's going to behave like that. So he removes it, sallallahu alaihi And then, after removing it, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he says, "Inna ahad, inna ahadakum idha qama yusalli, fa inna ma yunaji rabba, wa inna rabba hu bayna hu wa bayn al qibla." He says, surely when one of you stands in salah and you call on, I mean, he or she calls on to his Lord privately in salah. That's what you're doing. And the Prophet said, for surely his Lord is between him or her and the Qibla. This is Qurb. Surely his Lord or is between, when he's in salah, between him and the Qibla. Right in front. Yeah. So when one of you needs to spit, yeah, do not spit in the direction of the Qibla. This is ihtiram in Salah. Etiquette. If you need to spit, the Prophet said, then spit on your left. As long as nobody's standing next to you, because otherwise you're going to spit on them. <laughs> if, it's, if it's Salat al Jama'ah, of course it doesn't mean that then, does it? Yeah, if you're praying on your own, it means you can spit on your left. Notice also it means you can spit in salah. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. So if you need to spit in salah, if he's talking about salah, if you need to spit, then spit on the left or spit under his foot. And remember what it was made of, mosque. Of course, we can't apply it to the mosque today with carpets in them. This was sand and pebbles. Yeah, or wherever you're praying. Now you can't say, oh, I look at the Hadith, he's allowing me to spit in Salah, and even though I'm on a carpet now, and go like that. This is the misinterpretation, misapplication of Hadith with somebody who's ignorant. True? Give me no context. But nevertheless, can you spit in Salah? If I'm out there on the grass or something, it's showing you that you can actually, but not at the front. It is bad etiquette, the Prophet is saying, so spit on the left or under the foot, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he said. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, then what did he do? Then he took a part of his cloak, this is Hadith in Bukhari. Took a part of the end part of his cloak, cloak and he spat in it. Shaykh, enlighten us. So he spat on a corner of his cloak and rolled it up. Oh, he said, do this. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, do this. So this hadith came in the context of Allah SWT's closeness closeness yeah, and etiquette. And uh, there are many hadith and, and Quranic verses to close closeness with Allah SWT, isn't there? <coughs> when my slaves ask about me, they show me I am really near. Yeah. And this is all about Ihsan linked with that. Yeah. So Ihsan is we haven't finished with it we'll come with some other aspect and detail to it when we do another hadith to do with ihsan much later from the arba'in but ihsan in essence here is now being linked not before in arabic language but with the coming of the prophet sallam linked with with closeness to allah SWT, with being efficient and doing better and doing good works and in excellence, whether in ibadah, or dealing with people, or in commerce, or in character, akhlaq, 
yeah excellence as though Allah is watching you yeah that yeah so if you if I'm about to do something you see this is where it comes in now I, I feel Allah's watching me how am I gonna do it compared to when I don't think of that it's like when we you know well I mean let's take a driving test for example when I'm driving and the driving instructor is not next to me, how do we drive? Now put the driving instructor next to us, what do we do? We're two different ball games. Now we're talking about not different between a driving instructor, we're talking about Allah! Who are we going to stand on the Day of Judgment? Yeah? So you see what Ahsan really is, it's essence. Yeah? It's beautiful, it is. And all that's hidden in that little comment there, yeah, that we just uh, skim over. Uh, next time, inshallah, if Allah gives us tawfiq, next week we'll try and complete the hadith, which now looks at uh, asking about the, the hour or the time yeah, and some of its signs, etc. Uh, My plan is to do next week, and then because lots of people are starting to go on holiday after that, it will be a summer break, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. from the middle of July. And August we won't have any, but we'll start in September, inshallah. Okay. Ask. ask a question from the statement. I think you've answered half of it. You enlightened me slightly on it. Um, Dr. Omar Abdallah, uh, he did a lecture called What is Sufism? Okay, and he differentiates between the true Sufism and the false. Yes. And he makes a statement saying that true Sufism is the science of Islam. What do you think about that? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that is it, isn't it? What you've, what you've described. That is what it is, indeed. Yeah. He's right. He's right. Because mm. the, it's, it's, it's a reality is it's awakening that closeness. Anything, the tariqahs of the Sufis, etc., if they're on in the, within the Sharia, mm. the majority of Sufis are. There are sects who went out in mm. the past and present, but the majority who are following the way of Rasulullah, then their the purpose, objectivity, through the tariqahs and the ibadat they do and and akhlaq and their character and morals that they're doing that their teacher is telling them is for what purpose? Mm -hmm. To bring them close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. which is ihsan mm -hmm. in essence as well isn't it? Part yeah. of it is ihsan but ihsan is more than just bringing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ihsan, ihsan is not just an ibadah it actually goes beyond Sufism mm -hmm. <laughs> it goes beyond Sufism mm -hmm. because ihsan is to uh, it covers somebody a doctor at work, a road sweeper, a bin person, right? Mm -hmm. People who are active and busy in reforming and doing good in life, whether in mm -hmm. politics or whether in social society or whether in the environment, in anything I do, raising my mm -hmm. children, my behavior with my parents, my behavior with my neighbors requires Ihsan. Mm -hmm. So Ihsan is much wider, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Is that all here? Well, I want to go. Oh,